guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, Lucas's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get exclusive awards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full future access to our upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Those are only for patrons, y'all. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up. And let's go. Alright. I didn't mean to sound disappointed, but it slipped into my voice regardless. He opens his mouth to answer, but his eyes meet mine and he hesitates. He nibbles he nibbles on his lips, clearly pondering an answer in his head. I didn't think he was that serious. By the time he's answering, his face is flushed and he's looking redder than he did when he was trying on trying on all the outfits before. Hard to believe this makes him more flustered than that. No, we can spend some more time together. I want to do that. I'd like that. How about we go back to that cafe that Aura showed us? That place was really nice, and I wouldn't mind seeing it without all the attention he brings. He's always trying to make everything a party. That place sounds good. We didn't stay there too long yesterday. That's my fault. That's not fair. I offered you. I offered to take you home. There's no point in staying if you want to go home, right? Yeah, I guess. His ears droop, and I'm about to try to console him, but our moment is interrupted by a voice with a very distinct Russian accent. Lucas! Wallace! Привет, my friends! Kostya is rolling toward us with a bag in his lap. It's from a store I don't recognize, and the name isn't in English, but the black wrapping with golden lining gives it an elegant appearance. He's got a large smile on his face, and he looks surprised to see us. Not as shocked as the two of us, but it, it was clear that this had, it was clear that this is just a chance encounter. If I didn't know better, I would have assumed this was Aura's work. I didn't expect to find the two of you here. Are you on a date? No! Why would you assume that? We're not dating. I'm not even able to get a word in before Lucas is bursting. His entire body is standing erect and his fur is so frizzled that it looks like he'd just been electrocuted in a cartoon. Thankfully, Costia doesn't look too perturbed by this behavior. In fact, he's barely even acknowledging it and just continuing to smile politely. Ah, oh, sorry, my friend. I just assumed... Uh, never mind. Are you both, uh... Are both of you... Uh, are both of you well? We were... We were just shopping for clothes with a friend, but he decided to go get some lunch since we had some... Uh, we had some earlier. Ah, oh, excellent. Shopping with friends is always fun. Much better than parents and their overbearing need to make you get your ass kicked at school. Mine weren't that bad, but I can't say they'd never go, they'd never ever go for some of the clothes Ari picked out for us. I think my I think my parents would faint if they saw me in these. I don't even want to imagine my parents' reactions. They've always been the supportive type, but they tend to go a little overboard. I remember when I came out to them, they told our entire extended family and their co-workers. It was very embarrassing, especially because they didn't tell me that I and I had to find out when one of their co-workers visited and told me how brave I was. I had been so upset that Marcus had to calm me down so I didn't so I didn't go yelling at mom or dad. That's a faraway memory. Right now, I just have a wolf that's very happy to see us cradling what looks to be the fanciest bag to ever grace this store. Unless there's a jeweler hidden away somewhere. What's that? It looks too pretty for any of the things sold around here. Oh, this? It's a bag of chocolates from the store further down with a strange name. They told me it was Belgium chocolates. They're very pleasing. I've never had Belgium chocolates before. We should try going there, don't you think? Lucas hasn't said much since Costi arrived. It doesn't look like a stiff board. It doesn't look like a stiff board, so it's already an improvement over the first time. And but there still seems to be some tension between the two of them. Well, a one-sided tension. Costi doesn't seem to have any problem with talking to Lucas and always looking looks happy to be in his company. It's just the fox who always seems uncomfortable. There's no need for it. No need friends. You can share mine. I always buy a lot for later, so we can go eat these. We can get to eat. We can get to eat these now, and I can get some more on the way home. Oh no, we can't do that. Those must have been expensive. I, f I feel awful for taking some of yours, especially if you just end up end up getting more later anyway. It's no problem, friend. There's no better way to spend time than sharing food with good company. If he wants to share, then let him share. We can always get something for him later. Exactly. Did you did you want to sit here and eat? I did not mind, but I know Lucas wouldn't be too fond of sitting around somewhere as busy as this. It brings a blush to Lucas's cheeks, though he tries to hide it by looking at everything except the two of us. He even presses his ears back to the side and rapidly, to this, rapid, or even presses his ears back to the side to the side of the rapidly darkened insides. Not that it helps. It's fine. It's just one second, y'all. It is coffee time. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. That's the good bean right there. All right. Too loud. That's why we should go elsewhere. You know, you know where we can go, Wallace. 
My apartment is on the other side of campus. I assume yours is as well. If all fails, we can just go to the park. There's a little insecure part of me that feels a, that feels a little ill at just how well Costia knows Lucas. I know they have a history, but he probably knows more about him than I will for a long time. That sparks a light bulb in my head and reminds me of where we should go next. It's a perfect excuse to take Lucas back there again, and it shouldn't be too busy this time. I know just the place! I was right. I was right that the cafe is nowhere near as busy as when it was when Aura first took us here. There's only a pair of unfamiliar sheep, both of which are too androgynous for me to tell their gender. The only thing I, the only people I recognize are Henry, the young cheetah barista behind the cash register, and Joshua, the boardy, uh, the border collie who's leaning back on a chair near one of the smaller tables. There's no, su there's no subtlety in the way that he's checking out the cheetah, though he does spare a moment to glance in our direction as we walk in. There's a twitch of curiosity in his brow at the sight of a new face joining us, but he looks away with a curse after he catches himself staring at the wheelchair. There doesn't seem to be any signs of Bruce today. He must be out or somewhere we can't see. I know he shares an apartment with Joshua, so I wonder if he's there. Whoa! I've never been somewhere like this. I've never seen so many queer symbols so proudly posted on the walls. We never had somewhere like this in the cities I've lived in. We grew up in a shithole. That isn't surprising. Wasn't so bad. I never, th I just never thought that places like this existed. Oh, right. I totally forgot that all this pride iconography might rub Costi the wrong way. I was so excited to take Lucas here again that I totally forgot what, what this place was. Who, who knew how comfortable he'd be around all this representation? I know some of Marcus's friends don't feel comfortable addressing my sexuality, even if he'd always stand up for me. Still, Costi doesn't look upset. He just looks in awe at all the flags across the walls. He takes extra time to read all the plaques with their inspirational quotes scrawled all over them. Places like this always exist. Oh, places like this always exist. The voice didn't come from our group. Instead, it comes from the canine sitting nearby. Josh was still leaning back on his chair, but now his attention is solely on us, mainly our own canine. He looks amused at Costia's childish wonder. But now all three of us are just focused on him. There's visible confusion on Lucas and Costia's faces like they don't, well, they don't quite get what he means. That only causes him to tilt his head and thrash his tail against the floor, the fluffiness of it sending dust up into the air, like he's challenging them to argue. You don't know where we grew up. You wouldn't be able to have an openly gay bar with air without having it burned to the ground. Lucas, it wasn't that bad. Yes, it was that bad. You know the people there are awful. This topic is getting the fox heat and it's even negatively affecting Costia too. He usually seems calm and tranquil, but right now he just looks crestfallen. He's keeping the composure well, but it's clear from his lower ears and drooping tail. It reminds me of how he looked when he begged us to believe him when he said that Helena wasn't responsible for what happened. Look, there are always places like this around. Sometimes they're just a little more hidden. Everwinter is a pretty progressive place, so it can be out in the open. But there will be all places, but there'll be places like this in even the most backwater of towns. But now, listen here. Things might have been shit where you're from, but just remember that it used to be much worse. When was this happening to you? In high school? When was that? 2015? Gay marriage was legalized that year. It used to be even worse. It shuts Lucas up, but it doesn't make either of them feel better. In fact, it just makes the two of them look even more depressed. You can't blame them. This conversation feels bleak. Joshua must have noticed, too, because he doesn't look amused anymore. He's just closing his eyes and letting out a sigh. This is a whole different side than the flirty guy I met yesterday. Second hell. Hmm. There we go. Uh, I'm not saying things weren't hard for you. I'm trying to say that even in the darkest places, there's always hope. Bruce pulled me out of the darkness once. Don't let the world pull you down. Not when places with good people like this still exist. With that, he pulls himself off his chair and stretches. He picks up he picks up the coffee that he, that I didn't even notice was on the table and walks by the walks to the door, only stopping to give something to Costia. Here's my number. You look pretty cute. Would, would love to take you out sometime. I know a place with great music. Lucas looks taken aback, but Costia just gives the collie a smile and takes the card. He puts it into his pocket without even looking at it. Thanks. I'm not very good at dancing, but I'm a great talker. Shit. Sorry, I didn't mean to imply. That only gets Costia a giggle, and Joshua just gives a nervous laugh in return before he continues on his way out the door, looking knocked off his game. You should burn that. That guy's an asshole. He didn't seem too bad. I'm sorry about him. This time, the voice is Henry. He's leaning over the counter with an apologetic smile on his face. I remember Bruce mentioning he's got a crush on Joshua, and I can see it in the way his eyes keep flicking to the door. Uh, Bruce usually keeps him from getting on people's nerves. He means well, he just puts his foot in his mouth. Maybe he should shove the whole thing in there. 
That way no one can hear what he says. At least he's gone. Oh, they'll be back in a bit. He's just going to pick up some juice from the vape store. But you shouldn't think too bad of him. He's a really good guy. Trust me. I believe him. He looked like he was trying to tease us, but I don't think he meant to, meant to be mean. I think it was just a big, mi me, big misunderstanding. Lucas looks like he wants to argue some more, but he looks over at me and pauses, before just nodding and sitting down at the now-empty table that the Collie previously occupied. I don't think he's going to magically become fond of the Collie after just, after some nice, after just some words. He already didn't seem to like him yesterday, and this just reinforced that. He's only now just beginning to consider coming around to Oscar, and that's with the constant exposure to him. I can't imagine changing his opinion of Joshua anytime soon. Costi, on the other hand, looks to have already moved past it. He's back to staring at memorabilia like, the, like it's the greatest thing he's ever seen. It's truly amazing to see him so astonished. Every once in a while, he'd point something out to the two of us, and Henry would tell us tell us what it's from. Apparently, Bruce loves to Bruce loves to gush about all the stuff he's got he's got covering the walls, so Henry knows about nearly everything. Some of them even include photos from back when he when, back when he first attended Pride ten years ago. Even Lucas looks intrigued by that one. It doesn't take long long for our mood to come back to a reasonable level. Lucas is smiling around Costia for once. Looks like that argument. Looks like that argument was good for breaking some of the tension between these two. Now that we're back on a more reasonable level, I'm reminded of exactly what made me a little anxious in the first place. Sorry for not telling you where we were going, Costia. I totally forgot to mention this was a queer cafe. I hope that didn't make you too uncomfortable. My friend, you're fine. If anything, I'm amazed that somewhere like this exists and that this isn't a unique place. It's wonderful to see people expressing themselves so openly. I follow his eyes to see Joshua's return, and he's leaning over the front desk with Henry. The two of them are giggling, and the canine looks, looks like a totally different person than he did in our discussion. He doesn't hold a candle to Henry, though. The cheetah looks dazed by the border college presence and nearly falls over twice. Bruce wasn't kidding when he called him a lovesick puppy. There are fewer people today. It's nice. I hoped it would be. I figured all those people coming over to talk to us last time would didn't do you any favors. I'm sorry for what happened, Joshua. I really fucked things up again. The fox rubs his face before sliding his hands into his hair. He's just sliding his claw along his scalp, but I've never seen him mess up his hair before. It always seemed like the one one thing safe from his destructive hands. I wouldn't say it's ruined. We just got here, after all. We haven't even gotten anything to drink. Plus, I got little chocolates for us to share. No need to throw in the towel yet, friend. Costia jiggles the pretty black bag for emphasis. The shuffling of what sounds to be more than a dozen chocolates is certainly enticing. I look over, I look over at Lucas and try to give him a reassuring, as reassuring of a smile as I can. This would be a great time, but I wouldn't want to pressure him if he's really not feeling up to it. He's looking a little tense after what happened. But after he meets my eyes, he lets out a huff and relaxes, slumping against the back of his chair. He gives a dramatic roll of his eyes, but the corner of his mouth starts to curl and there's a darker tint to his ears. Fine, but it's not because I like chocolates. I just don't want to cause a scene. I don't think declining chocolates is causing a scene, friend. Let's just share them, okay? Second, y'all, it is coffee time. Oh, hell yeah. That slightly darker tint has evolved into a full-on blush, and his outburst has caught the attention of the two at the counter, who are peeking over with a curious glint in their eyes. Thankfully, Lucas doesn't notice, and Costia doesn't look doesn't look interested in bringing any attention to it as he pulls out little pouches from his bag. Their individual packaging looks just as fancy with little golden, golden bows and black net-like fabric holding the aluminum-covered chocolates. These look expensive. They do cost a fair amount, but my parents always send me some chocolate some chocolate money. We always used to get some together, and it's our way to stay close. Always try something new and tell them that I will tell them what I think. Aw, that sounds like a lot of fun. I guess the closest thing that to that for my family was picnics. Our house is only a short walk from the beach, and we'd spend weekends there often, even during winter. What about you? Did you do anything special with your parents? Lucas looks stunned to be asked this, and he just stares at us in disbelief. That quickly morphs into confusion as he looks as he looks to seriously think about it. I didn't think it was that complicated of a question, but it looks like he's having a difficult time coming to an answer. We didn't do anything special. We just always did everything together. I remember he mentioned watching the news every night with his parents, but it makes sense that it makes sense that they were even closer than that. It didn't sound like he had, he had anyone else in his life. It's been really hard for you to move out. My parents were often out of on, out on business trips, and it was common for me to be alone or just with my brother. But even then, it's really lonely in my room. There's a little bit of a sadness creeping into my voice. It's silly because we're still in the same city as my old house. I can always just visit when they're home, but it's not the same. But my 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Give a super thanks for a tip of the can. It always helps. Check out that Patreon, y'all. It definitely helps out the channel. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.